VPC2, copy the configuration. This is the VPC2. And then, for example, VPC3, copying the configuration of VPC3 and paste on the CLI of VPC3. Finally, VPC4. That's it. Now, our initial configuration okay, is completed and we can check some initial things. For example, first we should check the routing table of the routers in R1. Let me to check the R1's routing table here. Show IP root. We, we use the show IP root command to see, to monitor the routing tables. Most important command in the routing, show IP root. Look at here. In show IP root, we have only connected and also local or uh, local link. I will talk about local link in the next video. But for now, I want to say that local link, link is not important for us and we can't use the local link for sending traffic to other networks. Because of that, for now, uh, please do not consider the local link and, al and only checking the only notice to the connected networks. Look at here, we have a connected networks here in R1. The connected network is 10.0.1.0 is directly connected in ETH00 with the C code. C means connected. And also 10.1.0.2.0 slash 24 is directly connected in serial 1.0. Okay. And also 10.1.0.2.0. 10.1.3.0 slash 24 is connected to serial 1.1 and finally 10.1.4.0 slash 24 connected to serial 1.2. As you can see, R1 only knows the connect its connected networks. For example, R1 doesn't know about 10.0.2.0, 10.0.3.0, 10.0.4.0. Okay, what does this mean? This means is that if from VPC1 you send the traffic to R1 destined to 10.0.2, for example, the traffic should be dropped. Let me to show you. Now, after, before I sending traffic, if you, for example, from VPC1 sending a traffic to the 10.0.2.10, 10, the IP address of the VPC2 with the source of VPC1 10.0.1.10, 10, this, this traffic should be received in the R1. R1 should check the routing table of itself for 10.0.2.10 and because R1 doesn't have any route for 10.0.2.10 10, 10, it should uh, respond back to the VPC1 with an ICMP destination host unreachable and it should say that I don't have any route for this network and destination host is unreachable. First we can check this function. Look at here. You can capture the links. For example, in R1, I want to capture the ETH00. This is the capture of ETH00 with the Wireshark. So easy. I recommend you use the Wireshark for capturing the links. It's so important to learn the details. Okay. Here is the capture of the ETH00. Let me first from uh, VPC1. Okay. This is VPC1. Sending uh, one packet, only one packet to the 10.0.2.10. Okay, if you want to send one packet, you should use an, a switch in the VPC1. Look at here, uh, you can use question mark. If you use question mark, you can find which switch you can use here for sending, for example, one packet. For example, if you want to check the size of the packet, you can use dash L. If you want to change the packet count, the default is five. You can use dash, dash C. Dash C is good for us. Ping 10.0.2.10 dash C1 means only one packet please send to this IP v4 address. Okay, very good. Enter it. And you can see here we have this message ICMP type 3 code 1 destination host unreachable. Why? Let me to show you. Look at here. If a traffic from the 10.0.1.10, the IP address of the VPC1, sent to 10.0.2.10, this is the IP address of VPC2, the traffic reached to R1, okay, and R1 responds back with one, IC, one ICMP destination unreachable message, destination host unreachable, let me to show you, type 3 code 1. This means that we don't have routes to this host, for example, okay, let me first 
show you some things here look at here when you send when you use the ping command as you know ping is a utility ping a, ping is a command with ping command you order to the device that please send an icmp echo request packet to the for example uh, the uh, IP address and IP address 10.0.2.10 for example ICMP echo request has type of 8 okay and then with code of 0 ICMP echo request let me to show you look at here ICMP type A the, uh, ICMP echo request this is the ICMP echo request as you can see here ICMP echo request and the type of this uh, the type of this ICMP message is 8 with code 0 okay and then because the router doesn't have a route for this network for the destination router responds back an icmp okay another pack another type of icmp we call it destination unreachable look at here the next packet destination unreachable okay destination then unreachable okay with this explanation the destination unreachable with this uh, explanation extra extra explanation host unreachable look at here host unreachable destination unreachable host unreachable this means the, uh, that in i in this icmp we use type 3 code 1 type 3 okay type 3 is for destination unreachable but there, the type of the destination unreachable is host unreachable, means the network unreachable. You receive type 3 code 1. Why? Because R1 can't, can't send the traffic toward the destination because it doesn't have root. This is now our problem. We should solve it. Okay, this is the routing table of R1 and also you saw if the routing table of R1 uh, isn't complete it can send traffic to the 10.0.2.0 let me to show you the routing table of r2 r3 and r4 first in r2 i expect that we have we should have only the connected networks in the routing table show ip route this is the routing table of router 2 as you can see we have only the connected network 10.0.2.0 slash 24 and the eth00 and also 10.1.2.0 is uh, directly connected in serial one zero that's it because of that r2 doesn't have root to another non-directly connected very uh, or indirectly connected networks again in router 3 show ip root okay so easy again in router 3 we have only connected networks and also in router 4 show ip root look at here in router 4 also we have only connected networks in the routing table now we can use two method to complete the routing tables the first method is using the dynamic routing dynamic routing mean, uh, means that for example using routing protocols i will call about i will talk about this method in the future videos but in this video i want to talk about a static routing a static routing means administrator itself administrator himself should configure the for example routing tables how we can use the static routing you can configure a static routing with three methods one two three i want to talk about these three methods okay let me start with the first method in in a router you can use a static routing a static routing is a global command a static routing configuration is a global command because we want to configure routing table of the routers and this is a global feature very good how we can use a static routing the first command is configuring the outgoing interface for every destination for example i want to configure r1 with outgoing interface how we can configure r1 for identifying the indirectly connected networks look at here with this command rotor coming the, the rotor config the command is so easy ip root this is the command of the static routing ip root first you should consider the destination network ip root network and then mask for example if you want in r1 to configure a static route for 10.0.2.0 
to learn in to learning in R1 the this networks you should use IP root 10020 with the mask of 255255250 you should write you should configure